I think what really drove me crazy, and this is the most honest thing I've probably ever said, but what really, really made me crazy about being in that house is that normally I'm that dude in my group of friends. I'm the funny guy. I'm the best looking guy. I don't like hanging out with better looking guys because when we go out, I want girls to go after me first. That's very self-centered. It's very selfish. It's a horrible thing. I had years of that where like I refused to hang out with people that were clearly better looking than me because I wanted all the attention from the girls and that backfired because I was in a house with 10 dudes. I know you're going to fucking talk shit about this, but I'm just, this is my opinion. I was in that house with 10 dudes better looking than me. If I was a girl in that house, I would be the last guy I went after too. Are you kidding me? Do you see the muscles? Those guys must have been so much fun to have sex with, like grabbing onto the muscles. And I heard they had, well, I know they had really big dicks too. I lived with them. I saw them all. Here's the thing, like halfway through the show, I started being emotionless. I was, I, there was so much public sex. There was, um... I just felt like, you know, you know how you, you kind of go to jail and you lose your soul and you feel like your soul is rotting. I felt like my soul was rotting. I was emotionless. I didn't know who I'd become anymore. And um, I didn't even know if I could feel anymore. So there was a scene that I wish they put in. It was where I, I went up to Didi and I was like, Didi, slap me in the face as hard as you can. I need to remember that I could still feel. So she slapped me in the face and I got such a rush. It was the closest thing to sex that I had, her slapping me in the face because it was the the first time I really felt pain and everybody in the house they were feeling pain around me everybody I told this to everybody they were like everybody was getting their heart broken because when you play with your heart and you're in house relationships with you know dudes that are horny and just trying to fuck as many girls as possible but you know you're a girl who just really likes the one dude you're gonna get your heart broken like if you played with your heart if you were in a relationship in that house your heart was gonna go through shit that your heart never ever ever thought it would experience and because I wasn't in a relationship I wasn't going through that but I wanted to go through that because I would rather feel something than feel nothing at all and I was feeling nothing at all in that house. I was completely emotionless and numb. So when Dee Dee slapped me in the face, that was the first time I felt something in weeks and it felt amazing. So I had her slap me again. Then I was like, you know what? I want a man to slap me. So then Shad came up and slapped me in the face. And then I was like, you know what? I want somebody to fucking punch me. So then I was like, Malcolm, punch me in the face right now. And as soon as I said that, the executive producer walks out and he was like, no, we're not doing this. So so like to some people, I'm the fan favorite and I, I appreciate that, but the fan favorite should be people like Michael, Kareem, or Malcolm because they started the drama, they were in the middle of the drama, and they made the show. If it weren't for like the, all the drama that surrounded those three dudes, then you wouldn't even know who I am because you wouldn't have watched the show because we wouldn't have had a show. So. There's no Ethan without Kareem yelling at Ethan. It's not intriguing watching me hate myself, talk crap in interviews how I can't get girls. That gets old. You know, Malcolm picking Dee Dee one week and then Nerese the next week and telling them both different things and then acting like he's fucking not doing anything wrong. That's entertaining TV. A few of the best moments of the house. Uh, basically, whenever I would be in interviews and I would be just talking like this, um, where I could could still talk and I could still speak my mind and I didn't have to have any of those other are you the one people argue with me about anything I could just talk my shit and hear nothing back so interviews are my favorite part of the show as far as whether or not are you the one is rigged let me just tell you this it's I'm ashamed how many people are trying to figure out whether or not are, first of all it's not rigged okay we won that shit fair and square yes it was a long shot but if you've ever watched football and if you watched Aaron Rodgers play you know that Hail Mary happen. We threw a Hail Mary. Somebody caught it. I don't know who the hell caught it. Key threw that shit up. We all caught it at once. It was incredible. Since the show, like my fans or people who would watch any of my videos, it would be 80% dudes. Now it's 80% girls, which is the weirdest thing. My fans used to just be, you know, little like skinny, goofy, 18 year old dudes who didn't get the girls. Now, my fans are the girls who are rejecting those dudes who used to be my fans, which is it just weird to me. But um, I just want to say this. A lot of girls message me, I wish I want to date you so bad. Where can I find me one of you? How, how could I find somebody like you? You're all I want. Listen, 
And there's a dude better than me, probably in your college class, at the next bar you're gonna go to. The only difference is, that dude wasn't on MTV. Before I got on MTV, I was that dude that girls like you were rejecting and were ignoring. I know the lighting's different, but I just went to go gamble at the casino. Um, I'm back now. A lot of people got freaked out from me in the house because I was just walking. I couldn't I couldn't be in a conversation for more than two minutes. I would just have to go and walk somewhere and I would just, I, I called it the, the E-Money 500. I would just do a lap from the kitchen to the living room to the bedroom and I would just do it 50 times in a row just to get the blood flowing and just to feel like, I felt like a, a, a you know the movie Blackfish, the 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 the, the freaking documentary Blackfish, that draws so many parallels to Are You the One? Because we were held in captivity and people were just watching us. We were in a fishbowl and it was like a social experiment. And it's inhumane to put human beings through that. But I don't regret it, and I'm not mad at all because Are You the One was the the, the best. Thing that I could ever do in my life. It's the best decision I've ever made was to go on Are You The One strictly because it was such a dark time that I fought through. And I know that if I could do Are You The One, if I could survive that crazy, bewildering, um, mentally trying experience, I could do anything, man. I could climb Everest. I could beat the best pool player in pool. I could, uh, you know, beat the fastest golden retriever in a race to get the tennis ball. I could do anything now. So I'm just gonna, you know, I, I can't wait to, to see my next journey. And um, you know what? I, the corporate world, you know, in the, in the span of four or five years, I was, you know, I went from working a corporate job, wondering if this was it for me, moving down to LA, working behind the scenes, uh, dead end TV jobs, working, wondering if that was it for me, then working behind the scenes as casting TV shows, wondering if that was it for me, to getting a call from Damon saying, you're going to Are You The One? And then I was in the house thinking about killing myself, wondering if this was it for me. But now I know it's never it for me. I'm never gonna be trapped. I will always move on. And there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Another thing, all these jokes and all this slander about Dimitri, how he was never shown on the show. With those jokes, can we just cut it out? Can those jokes just get no airtime, please?